North American Indians, Marion Douglas Gorsline, the best book club ever. North American Indian. I don't want to butcher these names. Nutka, Salish, Homo, Shoshone, Hopi, Dene, Navajo, Pueblo, Apache, Comanche, Cheyenne, Sioux, the Blackfoot, Mandan, Ojibwa, Iroquois, Wampanoag, Seminole, there's Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, some of them lived in this way, this is Algonquian tribes who hunted and fished along the Atlantic coast. The men built dome-shaped wigwams of poles, which the women covered with bark or mats, leaving a hole to let out smoke. From clam shells, the Indians made beads called wampum, which they sewed onto belts and deerskin clothing. Wampum was sometimes used for money. The Wampanoag Indians taught the settlers how to grow corn and squash. The name Seminole means runaway. The Seminole Indians ran away from their farmlands in Georgia when the invaders came. They moved into the Florida swamps where they hunted and fished. Because the weather was warm, the Seminoles built houses without walls called chickies. In marshy places, they built their houses on high stilts. Osceola was a Seminole chief who would not give up his land to the European invaders. Five tribes made up the Iroquois nation of the eastern Great Lakes. This is Onondagan village surrounded by a sturdy log fence. The Iroquois grew many kinds of corn and hunted game for food and hides. They lived in long houses made of poles covered with elm tree bark. Many families lived in one house, but each had its own cooking fire. Very modern structures. The Algonquian tribes of the western Great Lakes were called the people of the Calumet. A Calumet is a peace pipe, which many Indians smoked when they greeted each other. Here is a small band of Ojibwas. 
Because their land was not good for farming, they traveled from place to place, hunting and fishing. In late summer, riding in light, weight birch bark canoes, they gathered the wild rice that grew in the rivers and streams. Hmm, sounds nice. The Great Plains of North America lie between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. The Plains Indians lived by hunting buffalo. Assini Bowen tribesmen hunted on foot. In winter, men wearing snowshoes chased the buffalo into deep snow, where they were easily captured. The Indians made warm robes out of the buffalo's thick winter fur. The Indians of the Northern Plains built sleds and toboggans, which they used for work and play. Dogs pulled heavily loaded sleds, and dog sleds were used in the buffalo hunts. The Cheyenne tribe came to the plains to hunt for buffalo. When the hunt was over, they enjoyed sports. Their sleds had runners made of buffalo ribs, which slid easily over ice and snow. The Mandans were one of the first Plains tribes to use horses. Horses were first brought to America by Spanish settlers. The Mandans lived in earth lodges made of log posts thickly covered with hard-packed grass and dirt. Lovely. An earth lodge was so strong that people could sit on the roof. One lodge could shelter 40 people, and some men kept their favorite horses inside, too. <laughs> Mandan men hunted buffalo. The women grew corn and beans. The Mandans built boats of buffalo hide stretched over a light wood frame. Horses made it possible for the Plains Indians to follow whole herds of buffalo, something they had not been able to do on foot. With horses to carry heavy loads, tribes such as the Sioux could roll up their teepees and follow the herds wherever they went. After the coming of horses, tribes from all over came to the Plains to live and hunt. They could kill so many buffalo in just one hunt that they did not need to grow food. Anymore. The Blackfeet were skilled buffalo hunters. The paintings on their teepees usually told the story of a man's bravery in a hunt. Indian children did not go to school. When they were small, they rode horses with their parents. Boys played at hunting with small bows and arrows. Girls helped with cooking and curing buffalo hides. How's it doing the right thing, Dad? Mm -hmm. The tribes of the Southwest were called Pueblo Indians by the Spanish settlers, or invaders, who uh, first met them. The word Pueblo means small town in Spanish. The oldest Pueblo tribe, the Anasazi, lived in small towns on the sides of steep cliffs. 
Their homes were built like apartment houses, one room on top of another. Sometimes they were several stories high. The homes of the Anasazi had no doors or windows. Instead, they climbed ladders to the roof and entered their homes through a hole there. If an enemy attacked them, they pulled the ladders indoors. The cliff dwellers' homes were well protected, but the people had to climb up and down steep cliff sides to fetch water and to get to their fields of corn. The earliest Pueblos built their homes of poles and stones, heavily plastered with a mixture of clay and straw called adobe. Adobe was very hard when it dried. The men held secret meetings in underground rooms called kivas. Kivas. Many Pueblos continued to live as the cliff dwellers had for thousands of years. Others built their towns on tops of high mesas or on flat lands close to their fields. Farming is not easy in such dry country, but the Hopi Indians grew corn and cotton. They wove the cotton into cloth. Hopi women made beautiful pottery in baskets. Perfect. Some of the dances of the Pueblo Indians are still danced today, just as they have been for many hundreds or thousands of years. The dancers usually form their circle in a plaza. The people watch from the roofs above and listen to the drums. Maybe they pray. The Pueblos dance to make the rainfall to make the corn grow plentiful, to thank the Great Spirit for good crops, cures to all sickness, health and prosperity. All the men's songs and steps are carefully taught to the boys when they are old enough to join in the secret meetings of the Kiva. Two tribes dominant in war from the north drifted into the areas of the southwest and began to raid the peaceful Pueblos. The Apaches were usually looking for food. They also took horses from the Spanish settlers, or uh, invaders, conquistadors. Yeah, Apache women built brush huts and gathered wild nuts and seeds. The Navajo tribe did not continue raiding. They settled down to grow crops and raise sheep. From wool they made beautiful blankets for which they are still famous today. A Navajo or Diné house is called a hogan. It is made of several poles covered with a thick layer of hard packed brush and earth. The Indians of the northwest coast had an endless supply of fish from the ocean and animals and wood from the great forests. They built large plank houses without using nails. Some of these are standing today from huge logs they carved, totem poles, which told the history of a family or clan. This Kwakiato village is holding a feast called a potlatch. During such a feast... A chief would give away food, carved wooden boxes and woven blankets to show his guests from another village how rich and powerful he was. Actually, I think I heard that they give everything away to show how generous and prosperous their tribe as a whole is. to treat one another as they would wish to be treated. Or it is better to give than receive. The Nunt 
ah, Indians were skilled whale and boat whalers, but whale hunters and boat builders, they built their canoes from huge hollowed-out logs. A whale could easily overturn one of these boats, but when a chief's harpoon struck a whale, the men quickly rowed away, dragging the huge animal along until it was too tired to fight. They hunt big fish. Each year, the rivers and streams of the northwest coast filled up with salmon. The Salish fisherman had a special place of his own, from which he caught salmon with a net. During the salmon fishing season, a man could catch enough fish to feed his family for a whole year. They had it sweet. Many American words, including the names of states, cities, towns, and rivers, came from the Na Native Americans of North America who spoke different languages. When one tribe met another on the plains, they often did not speak each other's language. They made a way of talking with their hands, called sign language, which all the plains Indians understood. They could also send messages across a great distance using smoke signals. Tipi, together. How many? Horse. Short. See. Done. Die. Challenge. Ooh. Leave. Drink. Dog. Yes, yes. Work, work. Water. Fire. The sign language. Saddle. Indian. Mm. Of course, they also had great city centers and technology, different from the hunters and gatherers who lived in the outskirts. There's a lot we don't know. North American Indians.